Well, and yeah. In that yeah. same spot, Peter has, you know, like Porcelain. a three drop and a two drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so. makes sense. He's playing one more land. Yeah, it actually makes total, total sense. The total mana cost of his deck is like three more mana. <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, what do you what do you think about the no equipment in Finkel or uh, Yelger's deck? I like it. I mean, I think their deck does exactly what it wants to do. Basically, every time they they need enough spells to flip their delvers, and they want to get those numbers. They want the double dungeon geist, and if you're playing the Jar School Captains, you need to play Phantasmal Image. Yeah, because uh, if your opponent ever taps out and lets you have a Jar School Captain in play, then you can you can almost like close the game with just a Phantasmal Image. Because uh, a Phantasmal Image copying a Dracul Captain will give both of them Hexproof. Right. And then you'll have two 3-3 three, three Flyers that cannot be targeted by your opponent's spells or abilities that make all of your other guys, and then all of your other guys also get plus two, plus two, and can't be targeted. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of a beating. <laughs> yeah, it's Imagine funny. casting a Lingering Souls after doing that. <laughs> oh yeah. That's 12 points of flying power spread out over, like, that's like... One Lingering Souls becomes like two Broodmate Dragons, basically. <laughs> that can't be targeted. It, it's so. pretty ridiculous. Remember we were taking, you know, people were going Phantasmal Image and Lord of the Unreal before, and then it's just like, oh, how about, how about we make, make it, it better? Fly. Yeah. <laughs> it's just more ridiculous. Let's make wow. it fly and let's make it have the same effect when you just double up on them instead of... Right. Well, you don't have to have the combo. You can just have two of this captain. Yeah, uh, I was talking uh, with, with she, I, I did the coverage with Nicholas and with Adam, and I can't remember, I think it was Adam that we were, we were discussing the equipment, uh, and saying, you know, it, it always feels like the equipment is better in everybody else's deck, and when I play it, it just doesn't seem as impressive, so. Alright, so Peter leads things off with a turn one ponder, that's the ponder from Lorwyn. I like that one, it's my favorite. I like it too. You know, there's like a mermaid yeah. showing you some shells. She's like, look at these shells, you want to think about them? <laughs> like, I got three more cards to look at. Calm down, merfolk lady. That's exactly what goes through my head when, yeah. I, when I ponder. <laughs> and that's why my ponders take so long, because I'm talking to the mermaid on the card. In my head. The manatee? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't really know how that happened. It looks like a woman <laughs> with the half fish body. I don't know what the woman like look like in your area, but they don't look like that where I live. All right, so Lauren with just an island, passing the turn over to Peter, and we're ready to settle into a Delver mirror. All right, Peter with a Sea Chrome Coast on turn two. Sides to taxi and probe Lauren. He drops down to 18 in order to do this. Lauren's going to let that resolve. All right, we see Island, Glacial Fortress, Geist of St. Traft. Is that Gutshot? Uh, uh -huh. Snapcaster Mage, Manalik, and Thought Scour. So. That's, a, that's a hand. Yeah, that's that's not bad at all. Even though I uh, would keep that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it seems really good. Every spell castable with uh, with what you've got. That Thought Scour is actually going to make the Snapcaster much better. Absolutely. I mean, so I think many different ways. people talk about, you know, Thought Scour being great in the Delver list, but I think mainly that's because of Snapcaster Mage. I think Snapcaster is what really, really makes that good. So uh, we have Snapcaster, Probe, you want to look again, same cards. Peter just wants to, uh, I think he just wants to get a, get a guy down and get, a, get some pressure, get another card. Yeah, and uh, I noticed, like, Peter, did, did Peter write down his opponent's hand there? I, I believe he did. I was paying closer okay. attention to Lauren's hand itself. Than it's Peter's always important writing. to write down your opponent's hand in situations like that. Uh, I've seen yeah. a lot of players not do that. So the thoughts scour from Lauren on the end step. But uh, again, to go back to writing down your opponent's hands, you know, you never think that you're above writing down your opponent's yeah. hand and that you can just remember what's in their hand. Uh, I've watched many feature matches where John Finkel has been playing. You know, I've seen him cast a taxi and probe, and John Finkel writes down every card in his opponent's hand. Yeah, there's no reason and not to. And he has a to. way better memory than you do. <laughs> All right, we have a gut shot for the uh, the Snapcaster Mage. So Snapcaster gets in for two without attacking, but disappears. Yeah, and I mean that Snapcaster Mage uh, already did some work. Yeah. The uh, the play of playing your Snapcaster Mage and then flashing back your taxi and probe for two life. You kind of turn Snapcaster Mage into a Silver Gull Adept where you have a Merfolk in your hand, which was already one of the best two drops Better you plays possibly you could do in, even in Legacy. Yeah. Yeah. So Lauren now has the Delver, in, uh, at least 
appears to be uh, on the stack. It looked like the, the game froze for a second. So used to watching some of the Pro Tour coverage where the screen just freezes and you're like, did, yeah. <laughs> did it freeze or are they just standing still? The hotel internet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Peter goes with a probe of his own. Oh, and I'm sorry, Peter's the one who probed the last few times. Peter probes again, sees another mana leak. Yeah, so now Lauren's got double too. mana leak, a Geist of St. Treft, a Snapcaster Mage, and a land. It's a pretty I good one. I like the zoom in there. A little, little bit later on the draw, but uh, still keep, I, I like that, I like that yeah, shot. Yeah, I think we can. Uh, Get a better look, yeah. yeah. So Moreland Haunt. All right, let's see. Do we hit Peter. it? And Bam. Delver flips off of Vapor Snake. Warren hits Delvers, man. That's nice. That's yeah. A skill to have. I'm good at flipping Delver. Draws the Vapor Snag, so no need for Peter to uh, get taxi and probe this turn. Knows what's in Lauren's hand. Yeah, now, uh, Peter, going to take three here. A surprisingly large chunk of his life total because he's already did taxi and probe a couple Twice, times. Twice, yeah. So he's going to fall to 13 here. He did pay and blue already for one, he's, one uh, the you know, five more swings from that insectile aberration. That's it. Yeah. So a thought scour from Peter. And Geist of St. Traft and Ponder into the graveyard. I don't know that that's exactly what I want to see going into the graveyard off a of thought scour. Yeah. Um, you know, nice to put the Ponder there for your Snapcaster. But uh kinda want the Geist. It's not the worst thing in the world or anything, but Yeah, it could certainly be worse. It could be like Delver Delver <laughs> right into yeah. the graveyard. Right, so here's a uh, ponder from the hand for Peter. Peter's cast three ponders, I think. Or was it he's just cast two ponders. Yeah, and he's detaxing probe twice. Yeah. And he's See, that's the thing about these decks, is you just can't show through your deck so fast. Like, it's, it's not unreasonable at all for Peter to just make a token on his opponent's end step, and they cast, like, a Rune Chatter Spike and attack with, like, ten. Yeah. <laughs> that's definitely a line of play that he can make. Yeah, th 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 that is one, uh, one advantage to Thought Scouring the Geist in the graveyard. He has a, a Moreland Haunt on board, so yep. he can make use of that Geist just fine. And that's another reason why Thought Scour is so good in this deck. It just has you know a ton of synergy in this deck. Yeah. Also, you just want to be playing more cantrips in this deck to make your Delvers better. It's just good. Yeah. Makes the Delvers better. Makes Snapcasters better. Makes Moreland Haunt better. Thought Scour is the new preordain. Shot of Lauren here. Lauren, that's how to hold some Magic cards. Okay, they've been playing for a long time. All right. Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage Man. Mega Man. Trying to, trying to. Uh, that's just, that's a stretch. <laughs> so he's going to flashback Thought Scour, and he reveals a Rune Chanter Spike and a Snapcaster Mage. Rune Chanter Spike, one of the few cards that you uh, really can't make use of once it, it gets Thought Scoured into the graveyard. However, it's, if it's in your hand while you're Thought Scouring, oh, yeah. that, it's that's, quite that's nice. nice. Yeah. Uh, Adam Prosak made the reference of uh, using all parts of the buffalo. Made, made that kind of comparison with, with some of these decks. He was really talking about illusions, but he was like, you know, the creatures go into the graveyard and I Moreland, use them for Moreland Haunt. It's like really using all parts of the buffalo kind of thing. Uh, that's a pretty good analogy, I think. All right, so Snapcaster and Delver into the red zone. I like, uh, I like Adam's choice of words. Yeah. When he's in those situations. All right, uh, Peter's going to make a... Uh, Delver token. Again, using all parts of the buffalo. Yeah. Buffalo okay. blue. Yeah, it talked a lot about going to Value Town. But <laughs> <laughs> we were watching our match. I go to Value Town so much, I just moved there. I love the uh, the new Star City spirit tokens. I love oh, the yeah, art. I didn't get any spirits. I did pick up my order. I got like a zombie, a wolf, and a squirrel were my, were my tokens. Have to uh, see about getting some of those spirits. That could be worse. I'm always disappointed about the squirrel token. You know, how many squirrel tokens do I really need? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so 
spirit goes away, and Lauren seems to be in firm control of this game, where Peter's only really been able to uh, to cantrip all game. And I mean, Peter's got <coughs> a handful of real spells, but Lauren's kind of just outmaneuvered him here. The yeah. uh, the early Delver makes it really hard, though. I think that's kind of the trick. If you want to be able to outmaneuver your opponent, you you can set the tempo for things if you just have an early Delver. You have to flip it 100% of the time. Yeah, and I mean, if you if you flip it literal 100% every time, <laughs> like Lauren has been doing to this top eight, then that helps a lot too. Lauren, Lauren's had Delvers that haven't flipped forever in the match that you and uh, Nicholas yeah. covered. Yeah, he had it was a Delver just that just a never one -one. ever flipped. <laughs> yeah, forever. I mean, that happens. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so is Delver better than Wild Nakata? In their respective standard formats, yes. How about uh, in, in over over? I guess you gotta I guess go legacy then because they're both yes, legal in I legacy. Yes, I guess it is. Yeah. I mean, here's the first thing that makes it better: it's blue. Yeah. Second thing that makes it better: it's obviously once it's flipped, it's flying. It's got got the evasion there. I think. Uh, third, well, the thing that makes them comparable. Well, let's let's talk about this real quick. A uh, Snapcaster Mage for Peter gets mana leaked by Lauren and. Uh, yeah, Lauren's yeah, it's just falling too far behind here. Oh, you mean Peter's falling? I'd rather, yeah, Peter's just falling too far behind here. The other thing that makes them comparable is, uh, you know, Wild Nakadal gets bigger when your deck is just doing what it wants to do, which is get all access to all three colors, right? And Delver, same thing, just gets better when you're doing what the deck wants to do anyway, which is play a lot of instants and sorceries in a blue deck. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's I funny how they, Delver they just naturally... Here's a three-power flyer for one mana. But it only works if you're willing to play Brainstorm. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, you're going to force me to play Force of Wills and Brainstorms and Counter Spells and, uh, you know, good cards? Brainstorm, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. We're going to see a lot of that later, I'm sure. A lot of Delvers and Brainstorms coming up today. Here I think the slow roll is warranted. I mean, it's game one. And I think he doesn't even do it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we have Vapor Snag from Peter on the attacking Delver. Lauren potentially in for lethal here still. And uh, he's going to mana leak that, which, uh, you know, seem, seems good because he's going to make Peter tap down. Yeah, I mean, it'll prevent Peter from using his Moorland Haunt defensively. Peter's going to need to Vapor Snag the Snapcaster Mage if he wants a shot. Right, shot basically shot. he needed to only have Vapor Snag, or... Uh, I think, it was Vapor Snag his only out there? Yeah, I mean, he just needed another copy of Vapor Snag, or... Uh, yeah, I guess even Gutshot gut would deal with uh, two. Gutshot would have yeah. been, been fine. Gutshot kills him. Yeah. All right, so Lauren takes game one on the back of the early, early Delver. Ooh, and it's time for a trivia question. Now that we want you guys to tweet in your answers to this question to hashtag SCG Premium, and the winner of this trivia session will get a free Gen Con pass. Now, these are pretty hard to acquire. Yeah. Gen Con passes? Yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome uh, I mean, most awesome people prize. need to go on some type of adventure to get these, but... You can get one just for telling me the answer to this question that I'm about to ask you. You got it? You got one? You good? Do you have a question? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't yeah. know if you, if you had already thought of one. Or okay. So, there's one of the things that was talked about during Pro Tour coverage this weekend was the, uh, the competitive nature between two beach houses hmm. that were both testing for this Pro Tour. Now, there are... Two players mm -hmm. from each of these two beach houses in the top eight of this pro tour. Okay. I I'm going to tell you two players from one of these beach houses, and I want you to tell me the two players who are from the other beach house. That's a tough. That's a tough question. It's also probably it's, it's tough. Pretty... Tough to tweet. <laughs> Jesse's yeah, face over there. <laughs> He's like, "How do I okay, tweet I this?" Okay, I guess I'll ask another I, question. I got one right, if you right. need. And, and it's it's a little simpler. Yeah. Um, what uh, breakout card is not featured in either of these Delver lists, but we've been talking about it all weekend as probably the best card to put in a Delver list? Yeah, that's a good question. Does that make sense? So, card that's been put into a lot of 
Delver what lists breakout in card has been added to Delver but is not featured in either of these Delver lists? How, however you want to word that. It's probably easier than the Beach House question that JBL just tried, yeah, that was, that was <laughs> tried a, to that word. Was a mess. You had I trouble apologize. wording it out loud. Yeah. Imagine trying to get that in 140 characters yeah. on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse's over there yeah. like, Beach House, name them. <laughs> name guys. <laughs> other from mother. I Big potato box. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, going to sideboarding here, we can. Uh, do we expect another dungeon geists from uh, to be added? Dungeon geist seems. Dungeon seems, seems, seems awesome really good here. in this. Yeah. I mean, uh, Peter Tragos has two dungeon geists of his own. Okay, so uh, Lauren can go up to three. Peter's got two in the board, so he can he can bring two in if he wants. You know what I haven't seen? We've, we've watched Peter now. This is just his second matchup on camera that I, that I can think of. I'm pretty sure we only featured him one other time, but um, I haven't seen the Porcelain Legionnaire at all. Yeah, um, I mean, Porcelain Legionnaire is pretty good. I watched a uh, feature match over in Richmond where one player was playing zombies and had a this massive horde of creatures in play, and his opponent just had a porcelain legionnaire play. Just holding them all off. And like his brother, <laughs> like Gerard made the comment that, you know, he could have walked over to the table mm -hmm. and thrown all of the one guy's <laughs> cards into the garbage, and it wouldn't have changed the game state at all. <laughs> <laughs> just, you don't need anything but the porcelain legionnaire. You know, that's a little known fact in zombie, uh, zombie lore, is that they're afraid of porcelain, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Like, wow. Or I think it said the Porcelain Legionnaire is not afraid of them. Well, that too. Because, you know, he doesn't have flesh. Right. Yeah, so It kind of makes sense that one Porcelain Legionnaire could hold up a whole sort of zombies. Like, yeah, they wouldn't even they try to eat him. They can't do anything to him. Yeah, yeah, he could just... Yeah. Just, just... I'm all... I'm good. You know? He doesn't have brains either, apparently. He apparently yeah. has... He has uh, consciousness, but not brains. Yeah, I mean, he's been uh, brought to life by the magic. Yeah, the, pl the Planeswalker magic, yeah. So, uh, all right, we've got... Looking at uh, Nolan's board. Does he... I mean, probably, do you bring in the Divine Offerings here? I think that's that's fair. Bring in the Divine Offerings. Uh, bring in probably the Dungeon Geist, and maybe even the Dissipates. Uh, I don't know. I, you just have, maybe I take Mana Leak out. Like, oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I, yeah, I can see this. Dissipates obviously, uh, or dissipates don't don't seem as good as. Yeah, like, they were last season. Game, you kind of just want to curve out in the mirror. Kind of seems to be like the way to do things. Fair enough. Uh, an another question though is, you know, what do you think about the swords in uh, post forty games? I, I don't know if I like them. I think that uh, like. If both players are casting divine offerings and revoke instances, are you just opening yourself up? Right. That's a good. That's a good question. Now I'm sure these guys have uh, have played Delver Mirrors before, so they must have some idea of what they want to do here. Um, but it would be interesting. Take out the take out your swords, and e even in that case, do you next level them and, and assume that they may take theirs out as well? And so you don't bring in your uh, your divine offerings or revoke existence or anything. And instead, just focus on, uh, on like you said, curving out. Just go all, uh, all pressure. Interesting. Lauren chose to keep his mana leaks in the mirror. Okay. That's uh, you know something that most people do not do in the uh, in the mirror here. It's tough for me ever to uh, to board out mana leaks if I'm not boarding in a better counter spell in its place. Now, uh, <clears throat> with Peter being on the play, I think that uh, normally would give him a pretty significant advantage, but you know, mulliganing in a match like this is pretty rough, especially when uh, you know both players are spending cards just to gain tempo advantage with things like Vapor Snag. I think Lauren actually has double Vapor Snag in hand.
For those of you who may be just joining us, I'm Joey Pasco here with Jacob Van Lunen. We're in Cincinnati covering the finals of the Star City Games Open Series, uh, the standard portion. We've got a lot of legacy coverage coming up for you in uh, just a little bit. We'll be covering legacy all day. Uh, but first, here we have the standard finals between Peter Tregos and Lauren Nolan, both playing Blue White Delver. And uh, Peter leads with a ponder here in game two, down a game. Um, I believe he started with a ponder game one, too. Didn't, uh, it didn't work out so didn't well work for him out, that yeah. time. All right, there's the porcelain there's legionnaire. There's the porcelain legionnaire. Top going to drop to 18. And that's kind of a beating. Like, yeah. Lauren, Lauren is double vapor snag, so if Peter just casts this in his Phyrexian mana again, he's already at 14. Yeah. Goes to 18, goes to 17 now because of the vapor snag. And now the 16. Lauren... Uh, so Let's that Peter resolve and Vapor snags it. And uh, now Peter's down to 14 already. Lauren hasn't even done anything. Wait, is he down? 14. Yeah. Uh, to uh, double Vapor snag and two Porcelain Legionnaire cast. Yeah. So, Geist of St. Traff for Lauren. And uh, that one doesn't get Vapor snag as easily. No, it does not. And now Peter recasts it again for Phyrexian Mana and goes down to 12. Lauren has another Vapor Snag. Wow. Ah, uh, there so we that's go. That's going to happen. Peter is, uh... So Peter's going to be at 5 after this attack from Geist. Peter's in... I mean, triple Vapor Snag. Wow. How he good is Unsummon? This is ridiculous. Triple Vapor Snag draw. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And if he draws Snapcaster, I mean... <laughs> Is he going to just kill him yeah, with twice. his own Porcelain Legionnaire just continually being yeah, cast? Yeah, I mean, Peter's at five. Like, this game is just... Wow. A kind of... I mean, now he can cast it. Uh, <laughs> he mana leaks before he even puts the spell out. Yeah, I mean... He's like, is this Porcelain Legionnaire? I'm mana leaking it. I, I appreciate that Lauren doesn't slow roll the finals. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren is playing at uh, you know high octane at this point. Is yeah. this, is that, was that vapor snag for the angel? Yeah, vapor yeah. snag for the angel. And Lauren goes to nineteen. Yep. Peter, Peter down to three. three now. At least he doesn't have a porcelain legionnaire to uh, to kill himself with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. I gotta tell you, you know. All, all that time I was saying, you know, I hadn't seen Porcelain Legionnaire. I think that was probably better for Peter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because as soon as we saw the Porcelain Legionnaire, it actually is, seems to be what did him in. All right, Oblivion Ring on Lauren's fresh Sword of War and Peace. And now Lauren just wins anyway because even if Peter has the uh, Vapor Snag, which he does, Peter also had the Triple Vapor Snag draw, to be fair. Was it triple or double? Uh, double, double, rather. Double, vapor double snag. with double snap, Snapcaster. Though, right. So. It, but he was, but Lauren wasn't casting uh, snaggable guys. Snag yeah. Right. Gut shot you. Yeah. And that's, and that's it. it. Lauren Nolan wins game two in about 48 seconds. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in the time it took him to decide on the vapor snag in uh, in the semifinals, he won game two <laughs> yeah. of, the, of the finals. So congratulations to Lauren Nolan. Takes down the finals. Of the uh, well deserved, he played yeah, very well. He played very well. Star City Games Open Series here in Cincinnati.